I'm your host, Jen Schiffer, Director of Community here at Glitch, part of Fastly, and Glitch Jams Live is our weekly live stream where I tell you the news that's going on at Glitch, but most importantly, we talk about all the apps that y'all have been creating. Um, I'm a lot of breath because I just like ran to get my Beverageino, which the drinks of the stream today are cold tea and hot tea, so... If you are drinking tea or anything else, let me know in the chat. This is a live stream. So if you're watching this live, hello. Um, say hi in the chat. I see Tiago's there. Uh, Louis, hello. Jen's in the house. Uh, and if you're watching this later on, thank you. Um, maybe join us sometime. Usually we're here Fridays, 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, we weren't here last week. Uh, Jen, why didn't we have a stream last week? Wow, Jen, that is a really great question. Um, the answer is that I was on PTO last week. And so <laughs> what were you doing on PTO, Jen? Oh, that's like a really great question, Jen. Um, I'm going to show you. Um, so this is what I do when I am not working at Glitch. I have recently been um, airbrushing. I got an airbrush and my Hello World, you know, I have, yeah, like, you have like a Hello World for any like project you make, whether it's like printing out Hello World or uh, showing like a table of contents or something like that. But my Hello World has been like pumpkins. Um, I made this too. This is another like goofy one. Um, so yeah, even though it's not Halloween anymore, um, I've been making like, I don't know, the pumpkin has become my motif lately. Um, more like code related though, I was finishing up an online course I've been doing on uh 3js there's this online course called 3js journey and it's like over 70 hours to teach you 3js and blender and some like developer experience tools for 3js uh if you actually go to my glitch.com profile um, i have a 3js playlist where i've been sharing the stuff that i've been working on um, so, uh, one that I had added a while ago, I had started this in August. Uh, I really liked the, uh, my, uh, 3D Bugs Rock that, like, randomly shows little, like, Cheerios in Chrome. But the latest thing that I had learned was doing 3JS with something called React 3. Fiber and it's just components for 3ds and I happen to know react already so this like makes my ex my developer experience of writing 3ds a lot easier so this is the same like bugs rock but I added a different uh uh what's the word uh material to it but yeah that's what I've been working on I finished it I got the certificate I like finished the course uh, I haven't done like school in a really long time. Um, it's not like a traditional like like higher education like course whatever, but it's like cool and it's done really 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 well. I learned a lot and I'm excited to just like do more 3D stuff and maybe maybe I'll help Mark Zuckerberg add legs to his metaverse people. I won't do that, but um, one thing I will be adding soon to Glitch. I've been working on it locally. Um, is uh. Actually, I could show you. Let me run it locally. This is like a game that like 
I made as part of like a lesson. Um, it randomly generates these like obstacles and then like you reach the cheeseburger and you win. Um, and this is, yeah, this is like 3JS using React, Fi React 3, Fiber, and a number of other tools to like make a 3D game that I'm not good at because I'm talking and doing the game at the same time. Um, but yeah, that's what that's what I've been up to. So thanks for joining me. Let's get back to uh, the top of it. Um, Tiago said, that's so cool. How did you make it? Yeah, it's like uh, 3JS for building like the models. That game, I didn't use Blender at all for that, but the cheeseburger was a model that's like already out there. There's like tools and sites that people just like make in open source 3D models, kind of like stock images. Um, but yeah, the 3D assets were either made piece by piece in uh, 3JS. And in fact, let me go back to, let me reopen. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, let me reopen my playlist. Oh, here it is. Um, Cause I'll show you, you can view the source of all of these. So for, I'll have the game up. I have to load it into, into Glitch, um, but you can view the source of all this. So this Bugs Rock is a React app, but it's a generated static site. And you can just go and you can view the source and see how all the stuff is built um, and like what models are pulled into it. So in the case of uh, this one, this, this is the Bugs Rock one. There is no like model. It's all done in 3GS here in this capture. So there's a text 3D component that does the 3D text. It takes a font of the material is what you like want it to look like. So this pulls in um, a texture and uh, like 3JS has like various like textures that you can use and you could also create them yourself. And yeah, basically like what's so interesting with 3D is one, the added component, the added coordinate, Z, <laughs> like makes things very difficult to work with. And so I like through learning Blender, it's been like a really, it's been a steep learning curve, you know, using Blender and to be able to kind of conceptualize the 3D objects within 3JS before I make more sophisticated ones in Blender is really cool. And also the models that people put online and you can find them even being shared on Glitch because we have a lot of WebXR developers and that's kind of why I got into this. Um, but they share their models and you can like convert those models into like 3JS components and pull them apart. Um, for example, um, I don't think I have an app on Glitch right now that's do that's doing it because I was working on the course. I wasn't focusing on every importing everything into Glitch, but eventually add more stuff and I'll share with y'all. Um, I'll also post in the forum. Um, Glitch has a forum, supporttechglitch.com. Uh, I'll post in the gallery the stuff that I've been adding because I did take like kind of a break for a couple of months before actually finishing the course last week because I had a time off. It's hard to like work your day job and immerse yourself in a new skill. So sometimes I take a little bit of time off before we do that. So yeah, uh, let's see what else is going on. Oh yeah, while I was out, uh, last year in Glitch came out. Um, these are all the uh, favorite apps from the community um, from 2023. We will get into that, but before that, at the top, um, I wanted to share that we have a no deprecation update. So um, at the end of last year, we deprecated versions of Node 8 and 9. And so our next update, and this went out an email yesterday, and we posted in the forum, um, which I've shown here. Um, February 28th, uh, it's in like six weeks, uh, we will be deprecating all versions of Node less than 12. Um, so check out the update in the forum, check your email, um, and you should update your projects running older versions of Node before that time. Uh, if there's a help doc that we have that kind of talks about it, you can just search Node uh, in uh, help.glitch.com um, where we have a table of 
what's happening, when it's happening, what to do. Uh, if you don't know how to update your version of Node for your Node project, you do that in the package.json file. Um, and this is just like all the rundown of like the different versions of Node and the different like things that happen and when they're happening. So check that out. If you have any questions, ask in the forum. Um, you can email support at glitch.com. Um, you can file a ticket in our help center. Um, we'd be happy to help you. And if you, for some reason, do not update your project uh, by February 28th, what will happen is that your project won't run, um, but you'll still be able to go into the editor and update. So like, it's not like you're gonna be losing your projects, you'll just like find that they're not running. Um, and maybe it's like really old and you're like, I don't care if it runs anymore, like that's fine. But for like your critical apps that you need and can't afford to have go down, um, you'll want to update those. Um, before the end of the month. And I will be exhaustively posting updates about this and talking about it as I was doing the prior updates. So hopefully you don't miss out uh, and spread the word. Okay, now we got that out of the way. And I'm gonna hydrate a little bit. Um, let's talk about last year on Glitch. So, uh, you can, we're going to have a blog post and an email going out about this. Um, and I emailed all the winners earlier this week. Um, but if you go to glitch.com slash discover, you can see the full list of our winners and honorable mentions for last year on glitch. And I figured I would go through them with you because they are all very, very cool. So let's start. Um, our most inspiring app is, uh, Bergen bike bus. Um, Bike buses empower students and families to use biking to get to school safely, um, which is really cool. And the Bergen bike bus tracker is actually local to where I'm at, like near New York. Uh, it's just like a cool community gathering to safely get kids to school in an environmentally for, uh, friendly way. And uh, yeah, using tech to track that is a really cool concept and that's what the Bergen bike bus tracker does. It tracks the live bus on the map and then has info in a form to join. And uh, there are bike buses all over the world um, and it's a really cool movement. And so the community voted for that as their most inspiring app. So you should check that out. Um, as I usually do when I share apps here on Glitch, I'm gonna have to give everyone a thanks there. So thank you, Daniel, for your work there. Our uh, Cools WebXR experience goes to Cinta. Um, I might have also shared a lot of these like on the stream because it turns out um, our community has really great taste, not just me. Um, but uh, Cinta Costera is a uh, coastal line in uh, Panama and uh, Rosa Park 0328 made a 3D experience um, of it using like a watercolor painting and look at it's animated. How cool is that? Um, there's also music that plays, uh, when you go to it, it's just like a very chill thing. Um, but it's cool because when you're like looking close up, it's like, oh, this could just be a photo with a filter. But then when you kind of scan up, it's like, oh, these are like hand drawn watercolor backgrounds. So that was really cool. Um, we give Rosa a thank you for your project. Karen Farr's baby computer was a most helpful tool. It is a uh, an app that they made that they've attached to a Raspberry Pi to build a computer for their baby to play around with. So this is me typing different keys and it shows up. Um, and there's tutorials on how to make the app and how to connect it to the Raspberry Pi. Um, it would be helpful for any uh, anyone who is in charge of entertaining a small child, but not wanting them to destroy your computer. Uh, I've also mentioned Kieran's work before, but Kieran does a lot of really cool A-frame 3D stuff. So you can go to their profile, check it out. But thank you, Kieran, for your work there. Uh, our most beautiful app, I definitely feature this, has been our app of the week. Um, this is Ellen Kitterman's Love Letters to Places I'll Never Meet, another beautiful watercolor background app. Um, they have a map used by the sur created on the surface felt that uh, uh, I just got feedback that when I move away from the mic, it gets quieter. I apologize for that. Anyway, the app is a map of places that shut down before they move to that area. And the love letters come from the reviews on Yelp of those old places. So kind of like a 
sweet, sad, like, I don't know, like, emo kind of project. I don't know. I love it. And so did the community. It was your most beautiful app. Uh, let's see. Uh, the next category is made you LOL, made you laugh out loud. This is Moldy Kitchen. Also, my gosh, I have to go to Ellen's uh, page and say thank you. Um, so Slimy Graphics made Moldy World, which is a collection of photos of moldy food. Um, I shared this on the stream and it got nominated for uh, Made You LOL um, by a number of people um, because, yeah, again, we all have really good taste. Uh, this uh, is a really cool collection and it inspires me to keep uh, visual logs of niche things in my life. Uh, thank you, Swami Graphics, for your work there. Uh, let's get into uh, best playlist on Glitch. This can't comes from uh, this is a familiar name in the work that we feature about Nanto Hieta's niche templates, which is an exhaustive, extremely generous playlist of starter apps that Naoto has made, um, even annotated, that run the gamut from just view framework uh, UIs, uh, Node and Browserify, to Hydra, the live coding platform, uh, Chu and P5.js, like stuff that you would not even expect. Um, I've said this before, but a very inspiring thing about Naoto's work is that they will create a starter and then remix it to make you know, an app for a code jam submission. And that's kind of like how I model like my own work. Um, and it's just really nice to be able to contribute to the community, a starter, and also being like, here's a thing I actually made from this starter. Like that's like the total glitch ethos. So um, shouts out to Naoto. Um, I'm sure I've thanked them before a bunch of times, but here you go. Uh, made you learn, I think is the next category. Um, and that is by, uh, Rory, um, I forgot your last name, Rory, I'm sorry, um, but they go by, uh, Digital Westy. So, uh, Creating with Data are a series of projects and tutorials and just, like, overall work, um, that Rory does to teach the community, uh, D3 and data visualization. So if you go to creatingwithdata.com. Um, you can find they have like a book, uh, they have a bunch of like tutorials and stuff, and all of these are on Glitch. And so creating with data is like the uh, list of all of those projects. And they're all, not only do they help you learn, but they're also like really beautiful as well. Um, and you can learn about different kinds of digital uh data visualizations and learn how to even make them. So uh, shouts out to Rory, thank you. Um, and you can go to all their page, Gianni. Rory Gianni is their name. So check out their page for more stuff. Then we have um, our new superlative this year was best Fediverse app. Um, so Stefan Bohacek's Creative Bots. Uh, was the winner. Um, Stefan's been keeping this showcase of creative bots on Glitch for a very long time. Stefan's like an OG user. Uh, and so when uh, Twitter made it impossible for bot creators to develop and exist on the platform, a lot of them moved to or had already been on Mastodon to move those efforts there. And Stefan's showcase shows um, the source code um, a lot of it is on Glitch, um, but also shows where the apps are in Mastodon. And you can just use any of those to learn how to make your own Mastodon bot, which is really, really helpful, especially for folks who have been making bots on Twitter uh, and want to find a new place to go. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let's see. Then we go into our kind of like fun superlatives. Uh, down here. Um, our most shared on social media was Blackout Poetry. This has been a an app that's been on Glitch for a very long time because it's got that classic button here. Uh, made by Emma Winston and featured here in many places because it's been around a while. 
um, and beloved by educators who like to teach poetry to their students. Um, this allows you to create blackout poetry. You select what text you want to keep. Um, this has just been shared widely on social media, especially by educators, creative writers, communities that involve writing and poetry in any way. And so it's not a surprise that this year it was its uh, most shared. The least likely place that you'd find a glitch app, but it's there, is another app that gets widely um, shared. Um, it, this was the most, this was the first app on Glitch to actually go viral, and that is the F1 Start app. Um, you tap and click when you're ready, and then when the lights go out, these are like lights that show set off before a, an F1 car race. I don't know much about F1 and racing, but I know about, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, gosh. Uh, so maybe I don't know. Um, reaction time. It's a word for reaction time. Look, I clicked before the jump start. Um, let's see. Oh, oh, I'm supposed to wait until the lights go out. So you click and then it goes. Okay. So that was made by my friend, Jake, Jake Archibald shouts out. I think Jake's at Shopify now. Um, but yeah, where did where did it end up? Because that's what this is about, the least likely place. Um, a forum about shrooms, magic mushrooms, um, had a thread of everybody comparing their F1 scores. I didn't pay attention to the numbers. I don't know if um, being on psychedelics improves your re reflex. That was the word I was thinking, your reflex time. Uh, I don't think it does, but uh, yeah. Anyway, um, finally, this one's carried over for many years, the number of times that I've been rickrolled by a glitch app, um, and that has been uh, six times uh, in 2023. Uh, that is down four from uh, last year, the year prior, I believe. So, um, you know, guys, we need to really think about how we can get these numbers up in the new year. Uh, we're going to have to follow up in the next few months and, and touch base on what kind of um, upstream, what headwinds we might be facing and getting that number uh, up to a manageable count. Uh, so let's keep it going. We'll touch base and contact our shareholders. I don't know. Anyway, six. That's how many times you rickrolled me. Can you tell I'm exhausted? Uh, anyway, also, by the way, if you're going to rickroll me, this is always a reminder. Only do it through a glitch app. Do not try to rickroll me through our support tool system, like our ticketing, because um, there's collateral damage there and it's unnecessary and it's a misuse of our abuse reporting and ticketing tools. Um, but if you make an app and you share it and I happen to see it and you rickroll me, um, you can watch past streams. There have been very creative ways that people have done it, but also sometimes people try to do it through the support ticketing and... I'm not really the one who sees them uh, at the at the start, so yeah. So while I want you to prove the numbers, do it in the realms of uh, the glitch app. Okay, let's jump into what's next. Oh yeah, make sure you go back to glitch.com slash discover um, and look at all of the honorable mentions um, there's two for each, um, and they're also just equally as cool as the others. Um, I do want to give a special shout out though to Hot Dog Pie Toss, that one honorable mention for both Made You LOL and Made You Learn. So I will share that. Um, also, let me go to Stefan's profile and thank them. There we go. Um, hot dog pie toss um, lets you toss a hot dog to get close to pie, um, which was inspired by this incredible wiki how uh, post, how to calculate pie by throwing frozen hot dogs. Uh, so yeah, so shouts out uh, to that creator, but check out all the rest of them. Um, they're all really, really cool. And thank you to everyone who not only... Uh, created these glitch apps, but also those of you in the community who have um, nominated 
uh, and contributed to uh, the discovery of these glitch apps. So thank you very much. Okay, let's next on the show. Oh, that's right. Glitch Community Code Jam. Let me close out all these. Tabby, 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 tabs. Okay. Um, so our Code Jam this month, I kicked off the week before last, the last stream that we had. The prompt is your dream default style sheet. Um, so uh, for those who aren't familiar with uh, the Code Jam, it is a monthly prompt that we give. It's usually abstract to help inspire you to create something on Glitch and share and uh, we've had uh, self-portrait was the inaugural prompt for November when we kicked this off. December was gift giving. Um, and you can actually, if you go to glitch.com slash jams, you can see the submissions to uh, that uh, on the bottom of the page. And then this month is dream default style sheet. So uh, we've asked the community to remix uh, the your dream default style sheet and only update the style.css to uh, envision what you think would be the ideal default style sheet that everyone gets. Like right now it's Times New Roman and Blue Links. That's what the browser has decided. But what if your style sheet was the default? Um, when you create it, uh, you can submit it by adding the code jam and dream CSS hashtags. And uh, yeah, and then we will share it and you can learn more all about it. You share in the forum. Um, you do have to add it to your description so that I can see it. Um, but I figured I can show you some of the submissions so far. So here's something. Um, so the app that everyone's remixing is, uh, oh, I called it something different, didn't I? Uh, let's see. Your dream default style sheet. Um, so I just clicked the remix in it. So what I provided or what this starter provides are all HTML elements unstyled. I went through them in the last stream. So if you wanna know what these are about and what they do, check out the video from two weeks ago. Um, and in the readme, there's resources of different cool CSS tools that my team and also the community have said that they love to use. Uh, there's a full list of all the HTML elements on this page with links to the MDN docs so you can learn more about them and, and what you can style with them. Uh, and then we just say update style.css and then when you're done, you edit the project details and you add a little code jam dream CSS. I'm not gonna do that yet because I'm not done, um, but I made a remix of that project and I added a drop down to the top um, that links to the submissions that we've gotten so far. So I figure I can go through and share them with you. Um, and so let's see. So this is what that page looks like without the style sheet. Shouts out to this freak, this little strawberry ASCII thing that I did. I'm very proud of it, which is why I'm always going to mention it. Um, and so here we have a number of remixes. So this one is my own that I just made to test that this dropdown works. What happens is when you select one, um, I just grab the style sheet from that glitch app and replace, like load it. So um, this will make the page have a purple background and mono space font. That's literally the only change that's on that. Um, let's see. Hmm, what do I want to do? I'm going to go to glitch. I want to go to the playlist that I created so far um, so I can make sure I credit the uh, creators as I go through it. Um, I'm going to be updating this project to when you choose it, say the creator and link to their app. Um, if there's any fe other feature requests for this, uh, let me know. This is inspired by CSS Zen Garden where different people made different CSS styles for the same page. This page isn't like one that I expect you to make beautiful. This is just about making the default style sheet, but they had like a drop down that allowed you to like select the different options. Um, so I have this like playlist here I made. Dream style sheet code jam submissions. 
and this the list the projects in this playlist populate that drop down um so this one's mine uh then we have a uh, minty monotype that's uh by our own jen um so uh you'll notice that her says monotype but it's not loading in a monotype font um let me open up her project in the new page uh, Jen, this isn't your fault. This is my fault. Um, but I believe that your project is loading a uh, Google font, maybe. And so when I'm doing the drop down, it loads the style sheet, but it's not loading the font. So let's take a look. DM Mono. Okay, so it's not a Google font, but it is a font that I have on my machine. I don't know. But Jen, if you're listening, if you change serif to monospace, that'll be a good fallback and it will ensure that my drop down thing will work. Anyway, this is very cool. Uh, Jen says that this is uh, inspired by a dress Shailene Woodley wore to the 2024 Governor's Ball ceremony, an Automatics Pixel theme. Do you think that her dress was inspired by Automatics Pixel theme? I'll have to check that out. I'm actually not even sure what the pixel theme is. I'll have to look into that. But still, I really love uh, this uh, color scheme. Uh, Purple Tasty Boar. This is from, oh, Raymond, Java Archive, regular in the forum. Um, so this is uh, their style. They added a dashed, that's a dashed border around the content. Nice margins. Oh, I love the different color dashed border for the text area. The uh, the form group has a different color. And uh, it's got this like cool, this font. Um, this is the navigation, which is very nice. Uh, yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's really cool to see how different everything looks. Um, so shout out Raymond. Uh, Simp Lie City. This comes from Khalil. Kalbi. Uh, uh, Khalil has really good taste and is also just a really excellent developer. So I always love to give a shout out when they're like design engineers and just really good developers who have good taste. This is a beautiful, beautifully laid out page. Um, the block quote, the aside. Uh, the details widget, really like beautiful stuff uh, here. I actually wouldn't, if this was like the default style for a web page, like no CSS, I wouldn't be mad about it. Also, when I shared this jam prompt in the forum, one of the regulars who um, I think like called me like maniacal or, or a villain or evil, but they were correct. Um, for having the text area be inline. Uh, if you actually I can change it to no style sheet. A text area element is inline. It's not a block element. And that's bananas. I don't know why the default is it not being blocked. That's not a browser decision. That's just like a spec for HTML. Um, I haven't looked into like why that's the case, but normally the first thing I do when I'm making a form is I make the text area a block element. Also the form buttons I make like a block element. So um, what they did here is great. Also uh, one of the, I love this like little tilde between the footer and that. Um, I did not, the, the prompt says not to add uh, any text to the index.html, but you can add style you can add text via CSS. So I'm imagining that Khalil added it via CSS. Um, they said the world needs another minimalistic design. We've seen our fair share of minimalistic styles, but nothing could satisfy my visual needs. This design is heavily influenced by the Interfont, the greatest font ever made in the world. Am I right? I don't know. That's debatable. Um, and the Nord theme. The theme also switches automatically between light and dark modes based on your system preferences. Damn, Khalil, you did like dark mode. Um, let's see. Here's where the text is added. So they followed the rules and they didn't add HTML, but they used CSS to add text. 
Now, whether that means that that text is accessible um, by screen reader, I'm not familiar with that, but uh, still, it's within the rules. Uh, let's see. Um, DD style is also a really nice one. I believe this, where did this come from? Was this from Tiago? Tiago, did you? Yeah, Tiago. Okay, yeah. Tiago is another one. Tiago, I don't know if you're still on the chat you were before, but you and Khalil both have like, I don't know. You probably both don't know each other, but you both remind me of each other in like your development skills and your really good like design sense and taste. Um, but here's another like similar, like minimal, but still like visually catching. Uh, having the uh, code element, is that a code element that I put here? Yeah, having the code element have that like pastel dark text over pastel background um, is really cool. The list items, the arrow as a bullet point for a uh, definition list is just like really like a nice touch. Um, and uh, your horizontal rule is really cool. Um, love. Love that you updated the uh, ASCII art figure with the pre-tag, with the back black background. Uh, really like what you did there. Um, and again, another block level text area, um, which we love to see. So that's like a very, that's a really, really good one. Um, let me see what, oh, that's my project. Uh, let's look at your description. Classic, small, simple, starter, stylish sheet. I wanted to do a cat-inspired CSS style, but I'm too lazy. Um. <laughs> this is, I was like, where did this banner come from? <laughs> Thank you, Tiago. Yes, I cut this banner about one minute after the stream started. And I also know that I can't edit this, but I don't care. And I was too late to share the drop-down code. So yeah, it's not here. You not you don't have to add the drop-down code. That is my own project. Um, I was thinking of adding the drop-down to the starter, but I didn't start making it until after I launched the, the jam prompt. But um, I will I will allow um, edits like this um, and, you know, yeah, thank you. That's that's funny. That's funny. We love we love an interactive uh, goof there. Uh, I think that's it of the submission so far. So um, hopefully that was inspiring for you. Um, I'm going to work on my own submission right now. Um, but yeah, remix uh, your dream default style sheet and uh, update style at CSS. Edit the project description when it's done and we'll share it. If you're looking for inspiration, look to uh, old Windows themes. I keep mentioning hot dog theme. I haven't seen a hot dog theme come through yet. People are joking about making them and I'm like, don't threaten me with a good time. Uh, think of like what your favorite colors are or even like take like a photo um, and see you can have a theme. One thing that like I like to do, uh, I don't know, I don't, I, I used to have this in my background, um, but I have these cubes uh, and so they used to be in my background and then people, everybody at work kept asking me like what they were. Um, and not that I don't like explaining stuff like this um, over and over again. I actually do because it's fun. I did move it out of the way because I wanted to make room for just like other junk that I have. <laughs> anyway, these cubes, um, which used to be my background, uh, are cards of color palettes and like an image base that was the basis for the colors. And I have two cubes of this that have a bunch of these. And these, when I'm like wanting to airbrush or like paint or anything like that, or even like I'm thinking of like what kind of style I want for a web app I'm making, and I don't want to like think about what should the color be. I can just like randomly go into like the box. Um, and again, I have two of them. Uh, they're called color cubes. Uh, they're from an Australian YouTuber. I forget her name. But you just like select one and be like, okay, like here's like a color palette if you're making like, I don't know, like a healthcare website. 
Uh, <laughs> no thank you. Um, oh, this one's, this one's good. You know, so it's like, try to find inspiration and in like images that you like. Um, and take it from there. Um, and also don't worry that, don't worry if your dream CSS looks like other people's dream CSS. That's fine too. Great, great minds CSS alike. That's, that isn't even like, that's just like something Eleanor Roosevelt said. Don't look that up. Okay. Let's see. Let me make sure nobody in the chat is mad at me about my microphone because it keeps moving away from my face. Uh, let me make sure I get rid of my terminal so that, because I was using that to deploy my weird 3JS game. Okay. Okay, so I, I remixed the starter uh, and that is uh, excellent messy helicopter dot glitch dot me. And while we're here, this is the live coding portion of the segment, by the way. Um, we I keep all of the links and like the video for each episode in jamslive.glitch.me. And I am going to edit it uh, to have that page that I made here so that you can follow along. Actually, I'll link to it directly. Let's see. So Jams Live, if you didn't know, is an 11T app. And it's where we post our run of show. And let's see here. My keyboard decided to stop working, which is great for me. Oh, actually, let me edit the project. That's what was going on. Okay, excellent, messy helicopter. I will definitely be renaming that, um, but now, you should be able to go to Gems Live. And there we go. We've got my excellent messy helicopter. Um, also, I believe I had the wrong URL for the dream default style sheet. Let's see. Housekeeping is important. Uh, and that's why I do housekeeping in front of views. Uh, let's see, source. I'm just gonna go into the project. Uh, meanwhile, I'm gonna share a link to the Jams page in the chat. And then you'll have all the links um, to this show and past episodes but it is just a markdown. Uh, let's see. So the your dream default style sheet. So I had it style sheet, not CSS. Cool. Now the URL is correct. Now we can move on to, I just wanted to make sure that was correct. So if y'all happen to follow along or want to code along with me, um, you can. So if you want to start, uh, go to glitch.com slash jams and then click this link, which will remix your default style sheet. And then you'll end up in something that looks exactly like this. Um, okay. So I mentioned before the readme shows like a bunch of resources and all the, uh, elements that are here. And we're not editing the index.html, but you can look at it to see what element is what. Um, and then you can also grab the names of them and the docs, as I mentioned before, from the readme. But we're going to get started. Um, I'm going to actually just like really kind of jump into 
what my go-to is when I'm making an app on Glitch. Um, the first thing I do, do is uh, I set the font family to monospace and I will uh, usually set the header background color to be a uh, cyan. Um, this is what I call like neon nightmare. Like this is like what my, uh, most of my apps, um, and also I'll like make prototypes and stuff that my teammates will remix to like actually build to completion. Um, but normally when I make something, I give it to them like this because I don't know, it just, I'm a visual person. I can write a bunch of code, but like I need it to like visually look different than when I first started in order for me to feel like I'm like making progress. Uh, and so uh, one of the like most impactful things for me is just to make everything uh, annoying looking <laughs> clearly. Okay, so let's get started. Um, another thing that I like and actually, we could look to inspiration. Um, I have a blog that is on Glitch. Um, Livelot blog is a custom domain, but it's um, the black blog that glitch.me also. It's the same. Uh, so this is my style. I like blue links. Um, I like to keep them underlined. Um, I think that is like one of the things that was like the main thing that I really like about default style sheets. And usually it's the first thing people change. They don't make the links blue. They remove the underline. And I think that is like a shame. Um, but that's what I have. Um, and you can see I have a uh, monospace-esque. I have a Google font that I use for this. Um, for list items, I usually keep them by default without like, I remove padding and margin. Actually, you can see one thing that you should uh, do that I like to do when I like some, the way that something looks is I will right click in my browser to uh, check out what the CSS is of it. And you can right click an element and it'll open up developer tools and it will show on the right here, those CSS rules and where they come from. So it could be the default for my glitch app here. It comes from an index.css file. Um, and then you can even like click through to see what that CSS file looks like um, for any page that's visible to you. And if the glitch app is public, um, like not private, my, my blog is private code because um, I want people to remix like all of my content uh and images but you can go to the app it's a private code app uh but like you can still look at any of the code that is client side as long as no one like minified it and i don't minify my blog code um but yeah i wanted to see uh, i'm going to inspect the header of this support these organizations and you can see that i have uh an h1 that uh or it's an h3 element and I, for asides, this is an aside on the blog. For an aside uh, section that has an H3, I set the border bottom to be one pixel solid. And then I have variable colors on my style sheet. So um, the border color ends up being black. Um, and then you can, I used to be really into like dashes with borders. Tiago says, my biggest problem with DevTools is that some websites are just full of websites that, and that's so annoying to copy. Um, I don't know if there's a typo there or I'm mis misreading it. Um, I would say the, th the problem with DevTools is that in 2024, um, a lot of websites are made with frameworks that uh, minify or obfuscate the output. And so it is very hard to, for dev tools and also us to parse like what that element actually is. Um, and that just depends on the developer that you're looking at. I tend to not l work with, um, like this is an 11T blog, live, laugh blog. 
Um, I'm not using like any JavaScript framework. So uh, the elements are very like you're seeing, like each is an article and they have a thumbnail and an H3 for the title and then my excerpt. Um, like you can like really see the breakdown of the page. Um, but as you use more and more sophisticated JavaScript frameworks um, and even CSS frameworks, it could be harder to like kind of parse like what is what is going on here. Um, yeah. Uh, also, but what is cool is I think like it does, it doesn't do a great job of really helping you understand the HTML, but the CSS for me, like, I'm like, cool, this is great. Like, look, you can see that it has pulled in like all of my color variables. So you can see like, here's border and it sets it as black. Um, Tiago says, I also almost don't use frameworks. Vanilla is just fast, simple, and easy. And I, and I agree. Um, I will say like one of the exceptions I discovered and I was showing you my, uh, um, my bugs rock app is that doing 3d with 3JS is like, there's a lot of code to do a little. And that's where you're like, okay, a framework will help me do this. I think for a lot of apps that are simple, like my blog, uh, like, you know, a default style sheet jam submission, you can get away, you, you would have a better time not using a framework. Um, and it's just like, nicer to experience. I try to start my projects without a framework. And then if I get to a point where I know I understand like the complexity, I might turn to a framework. And when I was learning 3JS, I, uh, um, let me go to my 3JS playlist. When I was, uh, playing around and viewing the source of stuff, dev tools is not very helpful. <laughs> Uh, and especially once you incorporate React and those frameworks, not only is DevTools about like your spec language work, but the errors and stuff come from the frameworks and you really have to depend on them to be helpful. Um, I'll show an example. So for this project, I'll open this up in DevTools. And if you're unfamiliar, DevTools, um, is available in most browsers. I'm using Firefox on the stream and for like work stuff, I normally use Chrome because my job, like they just like use Chrome. Um, but their dev tools are fairly similar. When I first got into web development, there was no such thing as developer tools. And then a thing called Firebug came along. Um, so yeah, anyway, Bugs Rock here is, uh, you see a lot of things here, but if you look at the code, there's not much. And that's because for 3D, you're dealing with a, a canvas. Um, and so in this case, if you want to be like, oh, how did this like donut here get positioned like that? Like if you write, you can't even, I don't even think you can get a context menu. I don't think you could right click this, um, but it's because it's being drawn onto a canvas. Um, what you can do though, is look at what other files are being loaded. Um, so if I reload this page, I have a JavaScript file that was built, um, and you can, let's see, view it, open a new tab, and this is it. This is like my minified, uh, this is like my built JavaScript that includes every framework I was using, um, 3JS, 3JS, uh, or React 3 Fiber, React 3 Dre, I think like a bunch of other tools as well. Um, whereas uh, Bugs Rock, which doesn't use a framework, it does the same thing. It just looks different because I use a different material. Um, but if I show you the JavaScript, this is a build file also, I believe. Um, yeah. Um, but let me view the actual project, view the source. This is like another really cool thing about putting your app on glitch is that people like can view the source of the raw files before the build, which is like a really great learning tool. But 
here I have Mix.js. Okay, this is all like really built. I didn't build this in Glitch. I built it locally and then pulled it into Glitch. Um, but yeah, anyway, that was a long winded response to Tiago's saying that like DevTools, it, it, there's diminishing returns on using DevTools when you have a site that's like built or if there's like a lot of like framework junk that's going on. Um, so I don't know, try to keep the web as pure, your JavaScript as pure as possible. Okay, I only got a few more minutes. I did a lot of talking, but I think it was a good conversational kind of thing and understanding. Um, so yeah, I went into like what my inspiration is, which is just like the style that I usually use for things. Um, another thing is I like to, uh, another default is I like my lion height. I just like a little bit more breathing room between uh, spaces here. Um, another thing I like is uh, I think thing I want I like my list items to not have is it padding? I always forget if the padding is indenting it. No, it's the margin. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I think the list item, you see how like I'm pointing at my screen like you can see me, uh, where my cursor is. Uh, you see how list items are indented? I don't like that initial indenting here. I usually like these to be like flush with everything else. And that's because the lists, I believe it's margin or maybe it's padding, okay. Adding zero and that remove. Why did that remove? Oh, you know what? I think what it does is the bullets are hidden. Um, there we go. So the default CSS for lists. I don't like and they don't make sense to me and it takes some like reworking for me to get it going. If I remove this like padding, there we go. Okay. So this is changing. I think I want list style position. I don't like, you see how my bullets all change? I think there we go. Okay. Now my, now my bullets are what they should be. And then I want my, lists to be uh was it no padding there we go okay so then the issue i have is i need the sub lists to not be flush with the left um i'm not going to deal with that right now i'll remove this padding um, for CSS, to do a comment, there's only one way to do comments, and that's with like block comments. There's no comments like to uh, slashes, but I'll hide that. Um, another thing you can also do in Glitch is you can change your settings to toggle auto refresh so you don't have to keep refreshing like I'm doing. Uh, I, If you're going to be doing a lot of edits, you might not want to have auto refresh because uh, you can like rate limit yourself if you're doing like a lot of work or if you are collaborating with a lot of people It'll just constantly be refreshing and it can be kind of annoying um, but like in my case here it's like Kind of nice to have it auto refresh, but I'm gonna comment that out again See uh, I loved that I think Tiago you had the uh, pre-element, uh, I think you had it like a dark gray, uh, which, and you, I think you had the border radius of the element 5 PM. I put 5 PM instead of 5 PX. Um, 
Let me change that to be darker. But then we want the font color to be a different color. So I'll make that a light gray. What is this? Oh, the linter is not mad, is mad that I'm using shortcut. Font color. What is, oh, it's just color. <laughs> um, it's kind of, it's similar to what you had had. Uh, let's see. What else? Oh yeah. Text area. I mentioned that text area elements that's like those big text blocks that you can enter stuff in. Um, they're in line, which means you see how it's like within like this block right here. Um, it's on the line with it, so is the button. Um, if you wanted the buttons and text areas to be block level or on their own line, um, which I'm gonna do it for both of them, uh, you set the display. So display is block. So now they're on their own lines, which I would say as, as mother nature intended, but as we know, mother nature created it so that those elements are in line. Let's see. And then another one, uh, the, and, and then I'll wrap up cause we've hit an hour. Uh, but a really fun one that I'm hoping people do some cool stuff. And I've already, we already saw some of them are these, uh, horizontal rules, these like ugly gray, uh, <laughs> <laughs> lines here. Uh, if you go to the readme file and you click, um, let's see, let's find the HR element. Is it in the readme? Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. So this goes to the MDN doc. Um, it's purely a line break, but like sometimes like the MDN docs will have like a cool try it like demo with some CSS. And you can see how they styled it. And they use the after keyword here to add some content. Remember when, uh, uh, I forget, it was Utiago or Khalil who used after to edit the footer. I think it was Khalil's project who did it. Um, and I mentioned you could use CSS to add content. Um, this is where that's good to do because accessibility, like you don't need to know that there's this like weird little uh, symbol. Weird because I don't know what it is. It could be um, important, but uh, they have the border be a double line. There's lots of really cool border types like dashed we saw um, in Java archive submission. You can do dotted, I like dotted. Um, but they did a double line and added this uh, symbol center with it. Um, so, I want to think of like something really cool to do with that horizontal rule because that's also a really old HTML element. That's not like a new thing. You would think it was like new because it was like kind of styly like, but um, it's not. It's cool. Um, oh, and I see I have some friends here in the in the header. So shouts out. Oh, and then they left. Um, so <laughs> yeah, let's. Uh, Let's end it there. Um, you can go to jamslive.glitch.me to see all, to go to all the links that I shared on today's stream. Um, and also look at past episodes and past links of all that cool stuff. Um, go to glitch.com slash jams to check out that code jam and submit your own. Um, you could also do multiples if you like. If you're like, I wanna do a serious one and I wanna do a hot dog stand, no one's stopping you. Again, don't throw me with a good time. Um, and uh, also go to glitch.com slash discover to check out all of the last year on Glitch submissions. Uh, and again, thank you to everyone who has been contributing, joining the stream, sharing your projects, nominating your favorites. Uh, 2023 was full of a lot of really cool, fun, creative projects as is every year prior. It keeps stepping up every year and that's because of y'all. And we can't wait to see what you create in 2024. Hot dog stand. Have a good day and have a good weekend. And I'll see you on glitch.com.